Good morning, everyone. Hi, thanks for joining this live stream. I'm Hashem, and we're going to talk about this book today. This is Ernst Haas, New York in Color. So let me know if you're online, if everything is working all right on the audio video end of things, and we will get into this stream. I'm excited about this one because I'm a big fan of Ernst Haas, and uh, I even came to the point where I thought, I might have already spoken about this book on the channel before and even done a live stream, but I couldn't find it. And even if I have, I'm happy to talk about it again. So that's what we're going to focus on today and just talk a little bit about Ernst Haas in general. So give me a moment while I'm just trying to get everything together. I had a few struggles with YouTube today, getting everything working, which is not unusual. but it seems to be okay now. But yeah, drop a message in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from if you are here live. And if you're watching this post stream, I uh, hope you enjoy it and that uh, you get something out of this discovery if you haven't actually heard of Ernst Haas before, which is um, something that I think I want to change in a lot of people. All right. Chat's working. We've got Jesse Lucas bought this book yesterday. Awesome. Very nice. All right. So, uh, one of my aims with these photo book live streams is to expose you to the work of photographers who you may not be familiar with. And uh, Ernst Haas is one of those such photographers who might fly under the radar for a lot of people. And I think that would be an absolute shame for you to miss out on his work if you're completely unfamiliar. And uh, this book is a great way to discover it. And even if you are familiar with Ernst Haas, but haven't seen this book, I'm sure you might get something by following along in this live stream as I flip through this book and give you a bit of a run through, but not flip through the entire thing, because there are actually other videos on YouTube that flip through the entire book. And I want to leave a little bit to you if you end up getting the book as well. And also as to not let this live stream get too long, which is one of the things I struggle with. <laughs> But yeah, this book is de um, dedicated to both his classic and newly discovered color photography from uh, New York City, which was done between the years 1952 and 1962. So that decade uh, in New York. And to me, it comes across as sort of a poetic love letter to uh, the New York of that decade. And it uses the, the rich colors of uh, Kodachrome and its speed limitations and therefore the motion blur to create these painterly and often abstracted vignettes of uh, New York City. I've never traveled there, but I mean, I've seen it so much in movies, photography, and so on. But um, yeah, as far as I know, it was published in 2020. I bought my copy in May, actually, of 2021, so two years ago. And as far as I can tell, it is still readily available at the time of me streaming this. And just checking a few more of the chats. Hey, Dave. Fred, thanks for joining. Uh, even before I was a filmaholic, I knew Ernst Haas because his photos had that kind of impact. Yeah, definitely a big impact for me as well. Um, but yeah, I bought my copy on Amazon and I have put a link in the description of this video if you want to check that out and get yourself a copy because it is worth mentioning that it is on sale for $29.59 US if you buy through Amazon US, especially for you guys over there. And, you know, shipping will be either free or very cheap for you. So it's a great time to get it. I paid around the same price back when I bought it. And that was around the time that a roll of uh, Kodak Ektar used to cost less than $10 because I looked at my order and I saw that I bought this book along with some film. Um, but yeah, those were the, the days of good film prices. Hey man, I had a. I was hoping you would join this stream as a fellow fan of Ernst Haas. But anyway, let's just um, get into the book. I don't want to ramble on too long. I'll save some of that for later. But hopefully everything's working now because I struggled with this a little bit earlier. And I'm going to go to our overhead view. So Ernst Haas, New York and Color, 1952 to 1962. And rather than read these uh, intros and forwards and whatnot in this book, because they're quite long, 
Um, it is a really nice forward. I think it's by his son. It's Alex Haas. I can't remember now if that's his son or not, but from memory, I think that's who it is. And yeah, there's another essay here, but I'll leave that to you if you end up getting yourself a copy of the book to read through those. But what I thought I would do is read a really short introduction that I'm quite a fan of from this um, other book that I have, which is the little photo file series book on Ernst Haas because I think it makes for a nice little introduction to him as a photographer, if you're not familiar. So I'll just um, read that for you now. So Ernst Haas uh, began his photographic career in the 1940s in Vienna, rising to fame following the publication of his photo essay on returning prisoners of war from Russia. So he grew up in Austria at the, around the time of World War II, and um, Haas chanced upon his subjects at Vienna's train station after a fashion shoot was cancelled. So how good is that? You know, like partially his start was um, through that sense of chance there. Um, Haas visited America and decided to make his home in New York. And it was at this point in his career that he began to photograph in color and establish himself as one of the early pioneers of color photography. Haas later became renowned for his work with motion photography of bullfights, nature, and athletics. He also found success in the corporate advertising market with campaigns for companies such as Marlboro, Chrysler, and Volkswagen. So that's the little intro from that book, which I also recommend if you want to maybe get a little short dive into Ernst Haas's work. That's the Photophile um, book. But yeah, this one is a collective of his color work specifically. He did shoot a lot of black and white uh, as well, but this is about his color work from New York specifically. So this one was actually the cover photo of this little book here. You can see what a different the print makes as well. What a difference, sorry. The reds are completely gone in this version. And thanks to anyone who's just joined, by the way. Hey, Luke. I'm good, man. How are you? Well, thanks for letting me know, Dave. So you can see that he liked to take a lot of photos of um, these ripped posters as well. And already you can see through these first few images that I flipped through that he has this eye for abstraction and geometry and kind of like shapes and color in a very painterly sense because I believe he actually wanted to be a painter when he was young or he at least has some kind of grounding or inspiration in that that world and what you'll also see throughout his photography is a, a love for long shadows and lines and architecture and reflections and things like that. But as mentioned, with the use of Kodachrome being a really slow speed film, I think, you know, it was 12 or 25 maybe at the time uh, in terms of ASA, meaning that you're either on a tripod or you need a, a lot of light or you're going to just have those shutter speeds go really slow and create this motion blur that you see here. And as mentioned there with the the keen eye for architecture and lines and reflections, you see a bit of all that in the one shot but also a keen eye for just the, the fleeting moments in the city as well. But yeah, I mean, I'm trying to remember how I discovered Ernst Haas's work and I feel like it was through my admiration of other photographers like Saul Leiter and then just eventually hearing about Ernst Haas or maybe someone on a live stream might have mentioned him. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad that I got myself a copy of this book and, and even the other little book was quite uh, a nice introduction. I think I might have gotten that first. But yeah, again with the motion blur, but what it does a lot of the time is actually add to the image in a way that you wouldn't think it would. And I'm not sure if it's because of just the, the rich color. I mean, that is actually in focus from what you're seeing, but the photo itself is, is out of focus um, because of the motion blur. And what it does is again, creates this really sort of painterly feeling, almost like a brush stroke because he'll intentionally look for these vivid colors like reds, especially, and then use that slow shutter speed to allow them to kind of streak across uh, the exposure like that. Hello.
Um, Dave asking how many pages. Let's see. About 200. 207 is the last numbered page. But yeah, uh, another thing I tend to see in in his work is a lot of use of telephoto lenses, which is not very common for a lot of street photographers, especially modern day street photographers who move towards wider lenses more and more as time goes on. You would see that Ernst Haas would be a fan of using these really long telephotos and just uh, isolating portions of a scene and and really isolating not only through that, by, but also through use of depth of field by bringing your attention to certain parts of the image and then with reflections and all this sort of layering, it just creates again this kind of abstracted look to a lot of his photographs. Um, but yeah, repetition, layering, um, depth of field, motion blur, you've got it all in a lot of these images. And the way the book is laid out is also really beautifully done as well with the you know complementing kind of images on either side and the lack of images printed across the gutter which is nice as well and you can see here what the the link might have been is you know they've got the little squares of the building with the white kind of uh, juxtaposed against the the stacks of newspapers being also little black and white squares But yeah, how nice is this? Like 1950s New York City, um, 19, early 50s to early 60s New York City. Just flipping through this book is almost like, I don't know, just going on a little trip, kind of like a dreamlike adventure, just flipping you know back through time through the eyes of Ernst Haas and the very unique way that he saw and photographed the city. And um, one thing I was going to mention, because I did bring up Saul Leiter already, but I also wanted to bring up Fred Erzog, who did really like um, similar work in some senses. This image actually kind of reminds me a lot of his work, um, which was in Vancouver, who also shot on Kodachrome uh, at a similar time. So at the end of the live stream, I might remind you of, of this book and another one that I wanted to recommend if you like New York and Color. But we're going to just keep focusing on this one for now. Yeah, I'm a big fan of attempting to use telephoto lenses for street as well. Not that I have done it too successfully, but it does create a really unique look. And look at this one, especially. You can definitely sense that he's used a telephoto here because everything is really compressed. And what really makes this photo for me is this guy just perfectly framed in that open door with the light falling onto him. Because if he wasn't there, it would still be a great image, but this just really is the icing on the cake, so to speak, and just the amount of beautiful color within it. Um, and yeah, because of that telephoto lens, everything is sort of compressed. So things in the background look larger than they otherwise would have, and everything is kind of flattened and compressed into a postcard sort of look. Hey, no worries, Luke. Yeah, I'll leave this one online for anyone who wants to watch it later yeah that's right Dave these are really this is a beautiful pairing as well here the reds the again the long shadows which he had a really uh, keen eye for so he must have done a lot of his shooting in the early morning or late afternoon uh, that golden light which further enriches the colors that you, you already see in Kodachrome but the film doesn't do all the work on its own it's a lot of about you know his um, timing, his eye, what he's seeing, and, and composition, uh, everything, the lenses. But again, either of these look like they could be paintings. <clears throat> and this is just surreal. Like the amount of red coats and the symmetry and the division and like the, you know, the scattered shadows throughout it. It's quite surreal. And then you've got all these buildings that are in the highlights in the background as well. Lots of repetition again. Yeah, I once tried using a 135mm f2 on a Minolta and uh, I really like the results with it actually. I sometimes shoot with a 90 on the street, uh, not very often, 
I do want to actually do a session with it again uh, on the Leica. I've got the 90 Tele Elmerit. <clears throat> but yeah, sorry, Paul, I didn't read your comment. You said you've just blown a roll of film trying to get hostile style motion blur like that. So hard to get it right handheld. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, love how he captures it and sharp subject at the same time. Yeah, it must be really difficult. And it makes me wonder if he used a tripod for a lot of these motion blurred shots. I, I would think that he definitely would have used a tripod for maybe the majority. Because it's very difficult shooting handheld and having a slow shutter speed and having some parts of the image uh, to be still. But yeah, lots of just like little pops of color. He was another photographer who I find enjoyed shooting in these vertical compositions, similar to Saul Leiter. And also a fan of shooting from high elevations. Even Saul Leiter, you would see that he would often shoot from the, the window of his apartment or somewhere up high. Uh, or maybe, you know, in the case of Ernst Haas, he would actually intentionally go up some tall corporate buildings or hotels or I'm not sure what and get these really high angles down onto the street like this one, but still use those angles to create a, a compressed kind of abstracted image with this keen sense of geometry by creating shapes within the image through that composition. And he doesn't necessarily always follow these rules like the rules of thirds or anything like that. I think he really... Um, if anything, enjoyed breaking the rules and having blurry images and it maybe intentionally blurred through camera movement. I'm not sure. There's a bit of sharpness here, but it's really hard to tell. And a lot of images feature these New York taxi cabs as well. So yeah, anyone who is not familiar with the work of Ernst Haas, I feel like this book is a great introduction. He did shoot color work. He did do a fair bit of reportage and, uh, sorry, black and white and reportage and other types of photography that is uh, quite different to this, but still has, a, you know, some similarity. But this book, again, focuses on that color work, on the low speed Kodachrome stuff in New York City. So it just ties together really cohesively and makes for a great, makes for a great experience just having this book in front of you, flipping through it in, uh, you know, a more ideal scenario than this. Uh, hopefully, you know, with some natural light and, a, you know, not viewing it on a live stream through YouTube's compression. But I can guarantee you that it's a beautifully printed book. It's a great collection. It's really well sequenced. And um, yeah, there's not much I can really say about it. Let's just keep flipping through a little bit. And then I'll, I'll kind of skip ahead as not to give, you know, too much of the book away. But it does have a whole lot of content. Look at that, it's this beautiful light, long shadows. Again, working from the distance, perhaps a slight telephoto. I don't know if this was maybe 50, 50 to 100 mil somewhere, if I was guessing. <laughs> 600 mil, yeah. That would be interesting to use on the street. A 135 to shoot across the street at burger joints. Yeah, that'd be cool. 135 is a really underappreciated focal length. And there's some great lenses in that focal length as well from, from most camera manufacturers, especially the old school ones. Hashem is bad for my credit card. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad for my own credit card. Um, but, you know, I'm not too apologetic because this is a win-win the way I see it. Beautiful photography in a physical format like this book is something that is well worth its price. It's better than blowing it on gambling or drugs or alcohol or whatever else, in my humble opinion. Uh, yeah, again, you've got these high angles. How does he get up there? Where is, is he on a bridge most likely or some elevation? Again, some similarity that I feel when I look at this work and uh, Fred Herzog. But a lot of that is due to the era similarity, uh, the fact that they're in big busy cities, the, the use of Kodachrome. So you got similar colors there as well. Blow it on a good book, not 
on a bad woman. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let, let's do some skipping ahead here. I don't want to spoil. I mean, every time I flip a page, there's just an amazing image. So it's really hard to skip ahead. But yeah, this telephoto abstracted layers. Again, those themes repeating themselves. Shapes. See, the focus is on the raindrops on the window here. But then you've got that beautiful silhouette of the woman behind. Try and get that in focus. There you go. Maybe she's on a train. You can see that little handle, that loop handle up the top. But again, he leaves a lot of mystery in his images by compressing everything and creating this perfect framing. And you can see here's another window. So the pairing is really well thought out. Window, reflections, colors, lines, shapes, textures. Um, there's a couple of highlight images that I wanted to show you. This one is one of my favorite pairings here. So it's almost like a cutaway of a larger image when you see uh, this reflection of a building, I assume, because there is some maybe, uh, what would you call it, like a window frame or something here. And I'm assuming this is a window. It's really hard to tell, again, because he abstracts these things so well. And then there's this streaky reflection of a building, is presumably in golden hour. And then the paired image is, I mean, these cabs, these taxis were beautiful. Imagine cars were still um, designed like this today. Um, but yeah, the the reflection in the window of the car looks like it could be this same building. Maybe in fact it was. Yeah, I love this book. It's so good. Let's um, see what else. I mean, yeah, like these little beautiful poetic moments as well that he captures. It's not all just architecture and cars and buildings. This could be, you know, Central Park or something and this couple just having this beautiful moment in the autumn colors in this late afternoon or maybe early morning light. Captured with this beautiful framing, just putting them off to the right and, and creating negative space with the shadows and that tree in the middle. And then something completely different here, but so well paired as well because of the similarity in the colors and the pair of people. So you've got like a pair of people there, a pair of cars. You've got a couple in this one. Really nice. So yeah, I mean, I've skipped ahead like almost 100 pages there and I'm trying to just leave some to you for later, but just to show a few more images that kind of take my attention. These reds again. Again, these sort of like images that feel like they could be cutaways of a larger image through the use of telephoto, maybe some cropping. Yeah. Let's, um... Let's leave the rest. Just see what's at the end of the book. So there's an afterword here. We can read this out. There is no city which can show better what man can make out of matter, but at the same time reveal to us what matter can make out of man. Sitting in a subway or letting all races of the world pass us by on the street, we can read in the book of faces what stories are written about our fellow man. Every face has a secret and a good photographer is in search of it. In New York, green means walk, but red means run. Don't stop, as to stop is a sin, an interruption holding up the flow. It is not a smiling city because the smile needs contemplation, but there is no time for that. Time is money, and money does not smile. New York can laugh hard but short, and all human emotion leading up to it are human, also human. Expectation, desperation, determination, pride, dreams, greed, loneliness are just a few of this uh, human scale of ups and downs, harmony and disharmony. It's an open show, free of charge, night and day. To capture within a moment the essence of this tragic comedy needs a heart and mind and soul and a well-reacting trigger finger to serve the eyes of the beholder. Ernst Haas, New York City, February 1985. Look at that, one month after I was born. Well, depends what part of February. Yeah, great print quality. Uh, released in 2022 as far as my research. 
still available, still in print, but I don't predict it'll be in print forever. I mean, these books are often uh, available for a few years and then they go out of production and then they become pretty hard to find. As I was recently, uh, you know, having a, a chat conversation with someone about on my one of my previous live streams, which was, um, yo, let's focus here, camera. Hmm. Not cooperating. I had it on face detect, but it, it's playing up a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully, it comes back in a minute. Anyway, that is really annoying. This camera's had enough for today. I'll just reposition the mic because that might be throwing off the focus or something. Sorry about this, guys. If this doesn't focus, I'll just use manual focus. All right, let's use manual focus. What a nuisance. Uh, yeah. It's still available, still in print, and I bought my copy for about 30 US dollars. I think it was 29 US dollars. And as mentioned at the beginning of this stream, I have put a link to the description in the description, sorry, to where I bought the book, was which was from Amazon. So if you do want to use that link, it is an affiliate link, it helps me out a little bit, but it doesn't cost you any more if you decide to use it to get your copy of the book. Um, but as also mentioned, it is currently on sale for the US Amazon store at 28. Uh, sorry, $29.59, which is a great price for such a great book. And uh, whether or not you use Amazon or find it somewhere else, I definitely encourage you to add this to your collection if you are someone who likes photo books because it's well worth it, especially at that price. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're watching this post stream, there's a good chance that special may have ended or the book may even be sold out sooner or later. I was surprised to see that it's still available for a decent price because usually a few years after a book like this has been out, it tends to go up in price, especially with the inflation lately. Love the motorcycle police shot. Yeah, that was a good one. How's everyone going though? I hope you're all doing well. It's a really cold and um, rainy morning here in Melbourne. So this was the perfect morning to do a live stream, to sit down, have a coffee and share this wonderful photo book with you, which is Ernst Haas, New York in color, in case you somehow missed it and just jumped on now. Excellent, excellent photo book. Uh, just good ones. Yeah, that's, that's true. I try and only share the good books. They're all good. I don't think I have any books that I think are bad in my collection. What current film stock would you say gets closest to Kodachrome? Vision 3 with a bit of NLP tweaking? Maybe, actually, yeah. Um, I've tried. I've tried. And it's weird because there are a lot of times where a certain element of using a certain film will come close to Kodachrome, but as a whole, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. There's something about the process, about the actual the film emulsion and its unique process that gives it its look. So you might be able to match some of the general hues of the colors. So you might look at the work of Ernst Haas and Alex Webb and Saul Leiter and, um, you know, uh, Harry Gruyere, for example, was a great user of Kodachrome and William Eggleston and, you know, countless others. And you might be able to pick them and, and adjust the hues of your images to try and match it, but it, it just never ends up looking the same. There's something about the way, not only that these photos were captured and processed, but the way they were printed so, you know, these images that you're seeing are likely to have been uh, dye transfer prints that were then somehow scanned for for printing or for use in in printing this book through methods that are no longer even uh, available. And I think that is what gave it a lot of its unique charm and look. So, you know, if you take a film like Kodak Vision 3 250D and you push or pull process it or whatever 
you can get close. You can do tweaking in NLP or Lightroom or whatever, but it's it's not quite the same. And I think that's nice because it re remains unique. If everyone could replicate Kodachrome very, very cr closely and create these, um, at least replicate this look in their imagery today, then it wouldn't have as much value. We wouldn't like it as much, I guess. But yeah, I don't have an easy answer to that. I don't think there is a, a single um, one-shot solution or film stock because I, I've tried it with um, other slide films. I've tried pushing ectochrome or like messing around with uh, pro image or um, there was another film that had a little bit of a Kodachrome sort of look like one of the recent re-releases. I think it was Adox Color Mission or something like that. It gave me a little bit of that painterly look with deep saturation and similar reds. But then it was only in those aspects and those regards, but not the rest. After dinner, it's nice to ignore all the bad news on TV and look at good photo book. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely a, a transportation to a destination and time. That's what I love about these era photo books, especially for this kind of mid-century period the post-war blossoming period in, in the you know the west and the united states and whatnot no it's just going for the ernest haas blur this was all planned <laughs> my camera was cooperating with the theme that's so annoying let me see if i turn on autofocus now if it decides to work Let's see. Okay. I think I just need to turn AF on and off. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Anyone watch the IT crowd? If not, excuse that um, terrible accent impersonation. <laughs> I wish. I do love his work. And, and in fact, it has inspired me not directly just Ernst Haas, but the, there's three photographers, well, mainly two. So Saul Leiter and Ernst Haas kind of form this like body of inspiration for me for certain types of work that I do. If you look at the majority of my work, it's nothing like it, but I do have these phases and, and series sometimes that I like to kind of uh, get a little bit more introspective and do away with the, the tons of people up close and focus more on shapes and colors and abstraction and, and, and things like that because I really do enjoy that even when I'm just walking along the street observing these things. And uh, if you are interested, if anyone is interested, I did actually do a couple of podcast guest appearances with Daniel Sieg on his podcast, which is called Create Photography. But I actually have um, a link to that. Why is my stream deck not working? Anyway, um, which... which is here. So I put a link in the description to my chat with Daniel Sig on his podcast. Let's get rid of this in the background. And uh, on this page, you can see I he asked me to submit a few images because we actually touched on Ernst Haas during this podcast because you know we both are a big fan of his work and we spoke a little bit about um, creating for ourselves versus creating for others and was you know Ernst Haas just doing his own thing and doing something different at the time. Uh, you know, escaping from the previous reportage news work that he might have done and just did his own thing. And then talking about how us in the modern day fall into this trap with social media of either creating for ourselves, uh, but more often feeling like we're creating for others, for what other people, you know, like online, for example. But yeah, I submitted a few images as the accompanying photos for this podcast. And I chose to choose a few... I chose to choose, that's stupid. Um, I chose a few images that I thought were reflective of the theme of what we spoke about and of the type of work that Ernst Haas inspires in me. So Ernst Haas and Saul Leiter and, you know, Fred Herzog and these kind of guys uh, through these few images that you see here on the screen. You guys do see this, right? Oh yeah, cool. I can see the preview. But yeah, like this was all from um, my series in this zine that I did, which is the sun-dried strip. If anyone has a copy of this, you guys already know. Um, but yeah, you can see the inspiration from photographers like Ernst Haas with the color, the long shadows, the repetition, uh, these sort of like classic abstractions of 
random things like chairs and windows and and whatever and the, the color red for example in this one um so if you are into that if you actually haven't uh been familiar with the channel or my zine i do still have copies of this i do have a link in the description to it it's called the sun-dried strip i shot this a few years ago and uh it is this type of abstracted work with a lot of vertical compositions you know slightly telephoto it's all 50 mil stuff more or less and focusing on things like shadows and color and textures you know similar late afternoon stuff which is part of the reason why it has the name the sun-dried strip and uh, the interesting thing is the place that I shot this is actually kind of an old mid-century inspired shopping strip which was originally built maybe in the 60s but then is undergoing gentrification now and changing a lot but yeah I've got copies of that in the description and I really support uh sorry I'm really thankful to anyone who does <laughs> who has bought one and has supported me through doing that So Dave, I checked Amazon and it's quoting $59.34. Yeah, so I had this actually open just to kind of show you guys that um, I can see on Amazon US. So the link that I've put in the description should take you to Amazon US. But if your account is set to you know Australia, let's say, or UK, then you'll probably just get redirected to your local um, version of Amazon which would end up really being the same because they just add a bit of a markup and you'd probably have to have it shipped from the US anyway. But if you are based in the US or you can easily access Amazon US, $29.59 US dollars, great price. But even the normal price is really good. Even if you're buying through Amazon AU or UK, um, I think it's about, let's say 50 or 60 Australian dollars which is still a great price. Assuming like cuz I would probably assume that this book will be out of print you know within the next couple of years but I don't know, it might not be. Um Dave, my bad that Amazon AU you have the right price for the USA. Yeah, so Dave, I mean, let me know actually if my link took you directly to the AU page. Where are you based by the way? I I've forgotten. You're not based in Australia, are you? Cuz if you are, that would make sense why you got the AU page. Uh, DxO Film Pack 6 for film simulations including Kodachrome. Yeah, there's a lot of Kodachrome simulations out there. I've never really messed around with too many of them. I know that I've tried Jamie Windsor or I've seen Jamie Windsor's ones. They're pretty good. He has a YouTube channel on photography if you haven't heard of him. And I think um, Ted Forbes has a Kodachrome thing as well. Kodachrome Pack or emulation. I'm not, I'm not sure how good his one is but I'm sure it's decent. Uh... Yeah, too bad you can't actually process Kodachrome besides as black and white anymore. If you like Fuji films, better buy them soon. Yep, yep. Yeah, solves every problem, doesn't it? You've seen the show? Yeah, I love it. Um, do I get any breakdown of where my viewers are located? I get a breakdown in the form of a graph. If I log into YouTube's analytics, I can just see, for example, you know, like, 50 something percent US and then U Europe or UK and then Australia, whatever, and so on. Um, but that That's about it. Lucian uh, got directed to Amazon AU. Yeah, so you as a AU account holder would get directed to AU. And it works out better because when I purchased mine, I think I did use Amazon US, but at the time <clears throat> I was purchasing film and a bunch of other things. So even though I had to pay a lot more for shipping than if I had purchased in AU, it worked out cheaper overall because I was buying a Tiffin filter and some film and whatever else. So I took advantage of the, the lower uh, list price and, but paid for the shipping. Whereas I usually buy on Amazon AU because I have Prime and it ships free and things work out really well. But yeah, man, like anyone who hasn't got this book who loves photo books, get yourself a copy. You will not regret it. Um, whether or not you use my link, go and find it at the book depository, go like look for it at Metropolis or any other bookstore that you support. If you can buy it from a local bookstore, even better because the, the affiliate link money that we get as, you know, um, users, affiliate users is like 50 cents or a dollar or something. It's not much. Uh, Paul, thanks for the chat and your wisdom, sir. 2.30 AM here in the UK now. Wow. So we'll catch the rest later. No worries. I'm probably going to wrap this up soon anyway if you're if you're still reading if you're still online um 
I have the book, by the way, and it's so inspiring. Keep up the great work. My scans are better thanks to you. And thanks, man. I'm glad that the um, the scanning content helped you out as well. Okay, so you're in Oregon, but it took you to Amazon AU. All right. So I think maybe I might have um, put in a link to the AU page, but you can just go on to that and then tell it to change to the US and I'll update the link anyway. So uh, if anyone's watching this post stream, I'll try and um, double check the link or maybe put in both versions in case people prefer to choose. Baladino, really good value, loads of great images, heavy paperweight, frequently goes on sale too. Yeah, it's kind of like um, Fred Herzog's Modern Color. So yeah, let's wrap up with uh, other books I recommend if you like this kind of work and if you already have this book, for example. So, if you already have uh, Ernst Haas, New York and Color, another book I would recommend if you don't already have it. I feel like every film photographer has a copy of this book. But this is Fred Herzog's Modern Color. We're not going to get it in perfect focus, but you get the idea. So this was mostly shot in, um, I think, Vancouver, Canada. And although there are some similarities between their work, there is also a lot of uh, difference. But if you like Ernst Haas, you will like this stuff as well. And this is what I mean with those telephoto vertical shots with the compressed street signs and colors and you know people at the bottom, which I, I you know I sense there was a bit of similarity with some of those Ernst Haas shots and you know the keen eye for architecture. Fred Herzog did shoot a lot of architecture and signage, advertising and, you know, corner shops and posters and things like that and the front of shops. So, yeah, there's a lot of similarity there. And I feel like if you like um, that book we just spoke about, you'll like this one as well. And another favorite book of mine is called All About Saul Lighter. If you don't already have this one, this one is usually quite affordable as well. I haven't checked it recently to see if it's still available for a decent price. Probably is because it's so popular. Um, I actually bought mine in Japan while I was there on holiday because I'd seen Soul Lighter's work uh, before I'd looked at my friend Nick's photo books and I didn't have one of my own. So when I was in Japan in you know 2015 or something, I actually still have the original receipt. <laughs> so I paid you know 3,000 yen for it. And um, even though I bought it in Japan, it's a dual language book. It has... English and Japanese in it, which is cool. It's just a unique little touch. And I think if you buy this online, it's about the same price. This was equivalent to about $30, $40 at the time. So if you can get it for that price, that's pretty good. Yeah, I bought mine in 2014. So great book. If you're not familiar with Soul Lighter, this is a great introduction. There's plenty of videos out there on Soul Lighter. I won't um, go on too much about him, but I do love his work as well. And maybe I'll save this book for a future stream. If you guys do have any suggestions for future uh, photographers, photo books, whether it's a stream or something else, let me know. Let me know what you'd like to hear about, what you'd like to see. So with that, I think I will just read these last comments and wrap this up and say goodbye for today. Uh, my credit card just had a stroke. Sorry, man. My wife just to, to my... Car, took my card, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't want to cause any issues here. I'm just trying to share my love for photography. Uh, just picked up Unseen by Lida. Yeah, I don't have that one. I wouldn't mind getting a couple more of his books. PDF just ain't the same as paper. In um, reply to that. Yeah, it's not the same. It's still better than nothing. But viewing something on paper is always best. Oh yeah, if it was free, that's great. Uh, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed discovering Ernst Haas. If you hadn't, that must be a nice experience because I remember the first time I discovered his work and saw that book, it was quite a unique experience and I still continue to enjoy this photo book until today. But thank you for all the support on the channel. Thank you for tuning into this, whether it was live or afterwards. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I have some upcoming videos and one of the next ones is going to be on this camera, which I'm borrowing. It's not mine. I'm borrowing it. This is the new Leica M6, the re-release of the um, the classic Leica M6 rangefinder camera by Leica. 
Uh, Ernst Haas actually did shoot a fair bit of Leica. I think he, he rotated between different types of cameras, but one of his main systems was the Leica system. And um, this is the brand new one, the re-release of the M6, which I'm uh, lucky to borrow from a friend of the channel, Darren, who, I don't know if you're watching Darren, maybe you're watching this post stream or, or not. But yeah, I'm borrowing this camera for about a week. I need to give it back soon. So I'm going to be releasing a video on this as the next video on the channel. And I have much more coming up after that. So um, yeah, keep an eye out if you're interested in my thoughts on the new Leica M6 and how it compares to my Leica MA and previous M4 and so on. But yeah, I hope you all have a good day and that you enjoy some photography, whether it's this photo book or another one. Thanks, Dave. Dwarven Chef, thank you. Cheers. And yeah, see you all next time. Hope you have a good one.